Let's speak now to Professor David Awarao, Professor with the Department of International Relations and Strategic Studies at the University of Lagos. Thank you, Professor, for speaking to us at this time. Thank you. Let's begin with your thoughts on this war that has lasted well over two months with no signs of stopping. Well, um, when the war started, we were all surprised because uh, we didn't expect Russia to start war at that, at that time, as we thought that there were other avenues that uh, could have been exploited to address Russia's grievances. And since we know that uh, war uh, has its uh, you know, uh, 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 drastic consequences, that war should be embarked on as a last resort, we were surprised when the war started uh, on the 24th of uh, February. Um, and we described it at that time as a strategic blunder. And it has turned out to be so, that uh, what Russia expected a quick victory over Ukraine and the opportunity to you know, dominate Ukraine and uh, other countries around hasn't quite happened. Um, unfortunately, it is not only Russia that has been negatively affected. Ukraine has been badly affected. And indeed, the rest of the world you know, has felt the impact, the negative impact of the Russia, of, of uh, the invasion of uh, Ukraine by Russia. So it's a strategic blunder. We hope that uh, they will think of a ceasefire soon so the negative consequences will not persist for so long. And we know that talks between Russia and Ukraine to end this war are on hold with the two sides blaming each other and uh, Russia saying Ukraine has practically withdrawn from the negotiations and Kyiv is saying Moscow has failed to compromise. Really, is there still hope? Well, um, there is no hope in the immediate. But it has to happen at, at some point. And uh, what we hope and pray is that it doesn't drag on for so long before what ought to have been done to prevent a war, you know, is done after so much destruction. We know there was a time that uh, Ukraine practically offered after so much. At that time, Russia was gaining momentum. Usually, um, when the war breaks out, um, the side that is uh, uh, gaining momentum in the war will be the least interested in negotiations. At that time, Russia was not uh, you know, uh, uh, willing to negotiate. It insisted on its position. But now, um, Russia is suffering um, extensive setback. The war has not uh, gone the way Russia thought it would. And uh, Ukraine, although it is suffering so much destruction, but it is making gains, that seemed to have affected Ukraine's uh, you know, um, acceptance of you know, what it had accepted before to ensure that uh, uh, you know, the war does not pay anybody, uh, so that uh, the um, uh, fire, you know, can be broken. All right, uh, Professor Awaros, one of the uh, offers, like you mentioned, Ukraine had been making some offers, is, you know, the country calling for a prisoner swap for the fighters that were evacuated from Mariupol. That's from the Azov Stahl steel plant. But we know about uh, over 200 of those fighters have been evacuated, albeit to Russian-held uh, territories. What do you what do you make of this? You know the fate of these soldiers. Yesterday we had a, a speaker in the Russian Parliament, in fact, a negotiator in the Russian-Ukraine crisis, saying he thinks the fighters deserve the death penalty. This uh, makes their faith uncertain, right? Yeah, very much so. Um, the concern has been expressed regarding the fact that uh, you know these Ukrainian fighters have been taken to Russian health facilities. Uh, one, everybody was happy that at least they would get some medical attention, and uh, you know uh, um, at least that that would prevent many of them from dying from various illnesses and uh, wounds sustained in the course of the war. But there are concerns that Russia does not have a history 
or humane treatment of prisoners of war. Uh, and, and the comment that was made yesterday, uh, you know, is a reflection of that, that uh, it is not likely that these uh, Ukraine fighters that have not gone to uh, Russian health facilities will be given uh, humane treatment and uh, that even some of them will not, so in some way, die mysteriously. Uh, these are legitimate concerns, and the concerns arise from this kind of comment, one, and second, Russia's history of the treatment of prisoners of war. And that is why um, United Nations need to come in, um, you know, more robustly into all of this. We are, we are happy, we are, it is gratifying, we are happy about what the United Nations did in trying to ensure that civilians also trapped in Mariupol, you know, were evacuated safely after, you know, so many weeks of being trapped in that, uh, in that facility, in that steel facility. Uh, would would uh, would welcome uh, more robust uh, involvement of the United Nations to ensure that these soldiers that are now in Russia air facilities, you know, are treated in a humane manner, and that some negotiations will take place, maybe prisoner swap and all that, for them to be able to return to Ukraine. That is what we expect to do. But Russia does not have a history of humane treatment of prisoners of war, and so the concerns. Are legitimate. Well, Ukraine on its part says it's doing everything possible and impossible to save the remaining fighters that are trapped uh, there. Uh, what could be the strategy in this? Well, um, Mariupol has been taken over by, uh, by Russia. And so the options that Ukraine has are not many. Uh, the options Ukraine has will be to negotiate negotiate with Russia, because in all of this war fighting and all that, negotiations did take place. So the options uh, Ukraine has, you know, is to negotiate. Uh, of course, the Ukrainian soldiers who have captured a whole lot of, you know, Russian soldiers. So there will have to be, you know, negotiations such that, you know, this side releases to the other side, the other side releases to this side, and, you know, uh, regarding the treatment too. Ukraine also will need to appeal uh, strongly to the United Nations, such that as the UN was involved in the uh, eventual, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, taking away of the civilians from Mariupol and taking them to safety, the same approach will be adopted such that the Russian soldiers will not be treated, uh, you know, badly, and ultimately, will, you know, there will be some arrangement that would uh, lead to their release, you know, for them to return to Ukraine. Uh, that is what we expect. But right now, Ukraine doesn't have many options. The option it has is diplomacy negotiation to ensure that these soldiers are able to return to Ukraine safely. All right, then, Professor, we would have to just wait and see how it all pans out. We hope for the best. Thank you so much, Professor David Awarawa from the Department of International Relations and Strategic Studies in the University of Lagos. Thank you.